Hey there everybody, Sage Apopham here, founder of the School of Evolutionary Herbalism. And you know, one of the most important skills for the modern clinical herbalist is having the ability to successfully treat the digestive system. I'm sure you're aware about how, what a big topic really gut health is these days. And you know, in my opinion, this is one of the most important um, organ systems uh, to understand how to treat holistically uh, from the vitalist perspective of herbalism, really looking at traditions of herbalism that understand the human organism and plants, not just through the lens of science and chemistry and things like that, but really looking at people and plants and understanding them through the perspective of the vital force, that there's a vital intelligence within the human organism and within the plants. So from those traditions, they really see that the gut is the root of what we might refer to as the vital tree, right? If we think of the human organism as a growing tree, that the, the digestive system really is the root of that tree. And as we all know that if the roots aren't healthy, the rest of the tree isn't healthy, right? And the same is true for people that if our digestive system is severely imbalanced, um, there's going to be systemic problems happening, right? That it's not that that a gut problem, when it becomes uh, serious enough, no longer is just a gut problem, right? That it is going to affect other organ systems, other tissues of the body, and can actually lead to symptoms that. Um, one would not initially think that the root of it is located in the gut, right? Things like headaches, joint pain, uh, skin conditions like eczema, uh, acne, uh, even neurological complaints like depression or anxiety or nervousness. Uh, there's a whole host of factors that can ultimately be traced back to digestive health. And this is why um, I'm a really big fan of herbal formulas for gut health. I've been working with a lot of herbs and formulas to treat digestive complaints and um, really it somehow kind of became a big focus of my practice over the years that as I have worked with a lot of people over the years, <clears throat> almost like 98% of them have some form of a digestive symptom, right? Uh, whether that's, um, you know, whether that's a heartburn, a kind of heat rising up in the upper GI, or whether that's just kind of basic gas and bloating or constipation or chronic loose stools or some sort of pain in the gut. There's just a whole host of factors um, that almost I find everyone that I've worked with at least has some sort of digestive complaint. And oftentimes they have uh, secondary and tertiary complaints that can be traced back to the digestive system. So with that, I wanted to share with you what I think like to think of as kind of a universal digestive formula. And uh, this is a formula that I put together pretty recently that I've just like, in love with. It tastes really good um, and it's incredibly effective um, at treating a very wide range of digestive symptoms. And so what I wanted, to, not just the, the symptoms, but it's actually getting down to the root cause and correcting some of the roots of those complaints. So what I wanted to do is just do a formula breakdown for you. Um, we've gotten a lot of feedback and people tend to really enjoy formula breakdowns and uh, kind of share a little bit <clears throat> of my thinking around uh, holistically addressing the digestive system. So with that, I'm going to dive in here and start breaking down this formula. So one of the things that a lot of herbalists are familiar with these days is, uh, you know, the concept of using bitter herbs to treat the digestive system. This is something that goes back a very long time, um, especially very common in Western herbalism, but really all across the world, uh, bitter plants 
have been used for stimulating digestion and things like that. And while they're getting kind of getting seeing this resurgence of popularity these days for treating the gut, I think it's really important that we understand how to properly formulate and administer bitter herbs um, because they're not, um, you know, just like anything, they're not this wondrous magical um, bullet that is just gonna fix everything and bitters aren't for everyone. I think that's really important too. Um, it's easy when you're learning about bitters from more of a biochemical standpoint, more of an anatomical, physiological standpoint, like what all of bitter, what all the amazing things bitter herbs do for us. It can be easy to think, well, everyone needs bitters, uh, but there's some factors that can be really easy to overlook about them. Um, but nonetheless, that I'll, I'll talk about, but nonetheless, they are really amazing for treating the digestive system. Two of my favorites that I've worked with a lot, um, primarily because they grow here where I live in the Pacific Northwest, is uh, Oregon grape root and dandelion root, right? I mean, I mean, dandelion root grows pretty much everywhere. Um, so that's gonna be Mahonia and that's gonna be Taraxicum. <clears throat> so what we have here with these two lead herbs is a very, um, you know, moderately strong bitter tonic pair. Uh, this is gonna be supporting the liver in the production of bile. It's gonna support the gallbladder, which we would refer to as a choleretic action. Um, it's gonna support the gallbladder in the secretion of bile into the duodenum, which we refer to as a cholagog action. Um, so this is gonna really help with the digestion of fats and oils. So one of the main ways we can assess if someone doesn't digest fats and oils well is while well, they eat really fatty, oily food and get their digestive symptoms, um, the stool is oftentimes pale um, bile is what gives stool that yellowish, brownish coloration to it. Um, and so when the stool is really pale, that's usually an indication of a lack of bile secretions. Um, we can also see dry skin, dry hair. Dandruff is a really common pattern for gallbladder weakness, especially around this area. Um, and then sometimes we see acne here around the temples. That can be a sign of gallbladder weakness. Um, but dry skin, dry hair, dandruff, <clears throat> even like nervousness even. Uh, oils are really important for proper nerve function. So we can sometimes see nervousness um, because the ner there's just dryness, basically dryness in the system due to a lack of oil absorption. Um, and then, of course, we can see constipation. If someone's not secreting bile, uh, the likelihood of them being constipated is significantly increased because bile is our body's natural laxative. So, so we're starting off here with a very strong, um, you know, moderately strong um, bitter tonic pair. So liver, gallbladder, fat and oil digestion, stimulating pancreatic enzymes, stimulating hydrochloric acid, just stimulating literally all secretions in the digestive system to prepare it for receiving food. Now the thing about um, bitters that a lot of people tend to overlook is their humoral or energetic effects. And the energetics of herbs is central to all traditions of vitalist medicine, right? That we don't just look at how the herbs um, affect the, the organ systems of a body from, from a physiological perspective, but we also look at how the herbs affect the tissues of the body from an ecological perspective. And that usually is looking at their temperature and moisture and tonal qualities. So with organ grape and dandelion, what we see is that these are both cooling. Ooh, that's not a very good marker. Um, I'll just stick with black. <laughs> these tend to be cooling plants and drying plants. Okay, so we're gonna kind of keep track of our energetics of our herbs as we go through this formula so we can kind of see how we can make sure we balance it out. <clears throat> okay, so our next um, layer of this formula is an herb that I always actually like to, I, I like to call it a bridge um, because it's, 
an amazing herb for digestive system. It's an herb pretty much everyone knows, um, but I think a lot of people overlook its digestive capacity, and that's chamomile. And uh, that's gonna be flower, and that's matricaria. So chamomile is a really amazing remedy here because it's, <clears throat> I, I call it a bridging remedy because it has bitter properties like organ grape and dandelion, but it also has carminative properties because it's very rich in volatile essential oils. Um, bitters and carminatives <clears throat> are really kind of the two main categories of remedies that we typically use to treat the digestive system. And what's great about combining bitters and carminatives is that they have, um, they, they balance each other out energetically or humorally. So I'm actually gonna kind of fill this in a little bit more and talk about our carminatives. So then we've got some fennel seed. That's funiculum. And then we've got some orange peel, which actually that's citrus, which also has some bitter properties. And then we've got some angelica root. And that, um, there's a lot of species of angelica uh, in this particular formula that I've been working with. I've been using your standard, um, I guess, garden variety angelica, angelica, arc angelica. Um, which is more the European species used. It's the classic one used in Western herbalism. That being said, there's a lot of different wild angelicas too, especially out west here. I um, mean, we've got Angelica arguda, we've got um, coastal angelicas, Hendersoni, like a whole bunch of different angelica species. Those wild angelicas tend to be quite a bit more bitter, whereas this one uh, is gonna be much more aromatic and kind of tastes a little bit better. Um, so here we've got a really dynamic um, carminative uh, support here where uh, all of these herbs, chamomile, fennel, orange, and angelica, all have rich uh, content of volatile or essential oils. And that is what brings about a carminative effect. So <clears throat> the carminatives really support digestion in a wide range of ways. Um, I remember when I learned carminatives, they were like, oh, carminatives, use them for gas and bloating. And that was kind of like the way a carminative was defined, which is just what it's used for. Um, I don't think that's a great way to understand an herbal action. I think the best way to understand an herbal action is to understand actually how the herb is acting in the body, right? Not just what it's good for, but what is the physiological quality of that herb? How is that herb adjusting a physiological process in the body? <clears throat> so with carminatives, what we see is that these types of remedies are typically functioning through a warming uh, circulatory stimulant property, right? Where they're actually bringing blood flow into the gut um, many times they're also <clears throat> relaxing some tension or constriction or spasm in the digestive system. In this case, we especially see that with chamomile, and we also see that a bit with angelica root, and fennel to an extent, not quite so much with orange peel, um, but we are seeing some definite, especially angelica is very circulatory stimulating, um, which is excellent. Um, and then, Let's see, what else did I wanna say about carminatives? Yeah, typically um, bringing circulation, relaxing constriction, and just warming, right? Many times these plants bring a certain degree of warmth uh, to the digestive system. So if you think of you know, drinking some nice hot ginger tea, uh, that really kind of warms up your core, right? <clears throat> and so that's the beauty here is that while our bitters are cooling and drying, our carminatives are typically gonna be much more warming. We see a little bit of an exception here with chamomile. Chamomile does tend to be more cooling, um, even though it has essential oil, so it's kind of unique here because it's, it's got these kind of cooling bitter properties, and then it has these essential oils that are very aromatic, but there's a lot of compounds 
in uh, chamomile essential oil that actually are, are cooling in nature, specifically azulene and cam azulene, um, which are the compounds that actually give chamomile essential oil that deep cobalt blue color. It's a really, I think it's one of the most beautiful essential oils. Um, so we see chamomile is cool and dry. Fennel is warm and dry. Orange peel, warm and dry. And angelica, warm and dry. So um, <clears throat> the other thing that we see here with angelica is we're gonna get a little bit of a relaxant effect. And with chamomile, we're gonna get a little bit of a relaxant effect. And we'll, we'll see a little bit of that with fennel too, actually. Now, the other thing about carminatives is that they're also really amazing for the liver. And a lot of people overlook this, but if we look at a lot of, um, for example, like Chinese formulation, we'll see oftentimes aromatic herbs are put in liver formulas to help to kind of disperse stagnant energy. You know, we usually think of bitter herbs for the liver, but um, carminatives are really effective here too, and oftentimes are combined with those bitters. And the way I think of that is it, for the liver is that the bitters, it's like the bitters are digging in on a deeper level into the liver, right? They're really getting in and promoting detoxification um, and just kind of dredge, like dredging out the liver. And the carminatives, because they're aromatic, they kind of have this movement to them, it, they're helping to disperse that stagnation. So the bitters kind of pull it out and the carminatives kind of grab onto them and then help to move that energy. And then a lot of them tend to be circulatory stimulants. So now they're moving the blood. So we're getting more blood flow into the liver. We're moving the blood to the kidneys, moving the blood to the gut and just helping to uh, disperse those toxins and stagnation and things like that to facilitate in liver detoxification. So <clears throat> the carminatives are a really good addition there as well to support the liver. Um, now our last and final remedy here is a really, really important one. And you know, if we notice here, we've got you know three cooling herbs and three warming herbs. So that's pretty nicely constitutionally balanced. Um, but you'll notice, Dry, 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 right? And this is a really common thing with herbs, right? Is that a lot of herbs tend to be drying constitutionally. You know, they're making you pee more and sweat more and poop more. And, you know, they're increasing all of these secretions that are ultimately leaving the body in the long term. So oftentimes a majority of medicinal plants actually tend to have a... Uh, drying effect on the constitution over a longer term period of time. And this is actually a question I get a lot is, well, hey, how come you're saying bitters are drying? I thought they increased secretions, right? So, you know, you take the Oregon grape root and all of a sudden, you know, your stomach is secreting these juices and your intestines are secreting all these juices and everything is secreting, right? Isn't that moistening up the tissues? Yes, in the short term, but in the long term, those fluids are leaving the body, right? And so whenever fluids leave the body, you're left drier. And so this is an important factor when you're studying medicinal plants is really looking at the short term effect on a local tissue versus a long-term effect on the whole constitution. And this is a really good thing to keep in mind when you're studying plants, and especially if you're studying different resources, right? You know, maybe you're going to these kinds of books and those books and studying different herbal authors. Sometimes you'll find conflicting information. That, what I just shared, can be a really great way to kind of help you to uh, see beyond those Seem, um, kind of seemingly uh, discrepancies. Uh, sometimes people, when they say an herb is drying, they're really saying, hey, oh, if you take this over a long term, that's how it's gonna affect the constitution. Same herb, another author might say it's moistening, but maybe they're speaking about a local effect in an acute short-term usage. So that's really important distinction there. 
Anyways, that being said, so dry, 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 dry. We've got a really dry formula. So in order to make this more constitutionally balanced, we need to add a moistening herb. And one of my favorites here is licorice root. <clears throat> That's glyceriza. And, um, oops, glyceriza. And um, wow, licorice, what an amazing plant. Uh, it's just, this is such an incredible herbal medicine. I think it is one of those plants that every herbalist needs in their dispensary. They need to know how to use it. They need to know its versatility, all of its properties and qualities and characteristics and how to use it and formulate with it. And it's just, I think it's an indispensable plant. Um, here in the digestive system, uh, we see licorice has a demulcent property. So a uh, moistening, uh, demulcent, soothing, cooling uh, quality to the mucosal membranes. So this is one of the major remedies to treat heat and irritation and things like ulcers, right? Or heartburn, uh, those hot burning type uh, conditions in the digestive system, licorice is amazing. Um, what's really excellent about licorice in the treatment of ulcers is that not only does it soothe and cool and moisten a very inflamed, irritable mucous membrane, but it also has uh, a very broad spectrum antiviral property, so thereby helping to treat uh, the um, Helicobacter pylori infection that oftentimes accompanies a gastric ulcer. So it's really supporting ulceration uh, from a couple of different perspectives there, uh, or more different mechanisms. Uh, in, in the digestive system, uh, intestinally speaking, it's very anti-inflammatory. And I always use, I use that word very, uh, not very often because most herbs aren't truly quote anti-inflammatory in the way that we think of like prednisone or aspirin or ibuprofen, right? Those are like very anti-inflammatory because they literally are turning off the pathway of inflammation higher up in that biochemical cascade. Most herbs tend to be more inflammation modulating. Uh, they're not necessarily shutting off inflammation. They're just modulating a healthy inflammatory response, but licorice is one of those remedies that is actually working higher up on a biochemical cascade of inflammation. Specifically here, it's preserving the body's endogenous levels of cortisol. So it's uh, extending the half-life of our body's innate anti-inflammatory molecule. Uh, so it's very powerful in the way that it reduces inflammation, irritation, really great for hypersensitivities, immunological hypersensitivities. So this is a very applicable remedy for things like uh, leaky gut syndrome, food intolerance, autoimmune conditions that can be traced back to excessive inflammation in the gut. Uh, it's just, there's so many, I mean, why one could do a whole weekend workshop just on licorice. This is an amazing plant. And one of the important things here is that it's pretty neutral to slightly cool temperature wise, but moistening, right? And so this is gonna really tie together this formula by bringing about more of a moistening property and uh, thereby making it much more suitable for a wider range of constitutions. Now, of course, this leaves us with, well, how much of each herb uh, is in this formula, right? It's always the big question of how do you figure out what's what? So, I mean, it really depends. So what I like to do is like, this is a root formula and you can really adjust your ratios based on what you need. So if someone say tends to be more hot and inflamed and irritated in their tissues or something, maybe we want, or maybe they're just, um, more hot constitutionally, well, maybe we wanna increase the amount of cooling herbs. Uh, if they're really cold, maybe we wanna increase the warming herbs. If they're really dry, we need to make sure we put an adequate amount 
of licorice in here. So how much you use of each of these herbs really, excuse me, really depends on who you're treating, what you're treating, etc. But the beauty of a formula like this is that it's just a great all around support for the digestive system, blood flow, circulation, gastric secretions, intestinal secretions, pancreatic, liver, gallbladder secretions. Amazing to relieve things like constipation, things like inflammation in the gut, your basic kind of general gas, bloating, distension, nausea, cramping, uh, all, you know, there's a lot of antiseptic properties going on here too. Oregon grape has antiseptic properties. Licorice has antiseptic properties. Angelica has some antiseptic properties. So even helping to potentially eliminate any possible pathogens present in the gut, um, this formula would be effective on that level too. But so if I was to just give a basic rundown of the amounts of the herbs I would wanna do in this formula, um, I, it would look, for me, it would look something like this. So I would go maybe 20%, and this is all percent, 20% each of Oregon grape and dandelion, and maybe go 15% of chamomile, and that's 40, 55, 85, and then we would do <clears throat> maybe, uh, Let's see, another 15% of the citrus. Nope, we're gonna, we're gonna do 15% of the angelica. 10, 10, 10, let's double check. 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So that'd be, um, so we have a lead of Oregon grape and dandelion um, as our lead bitter tonic pair, 40% of the formula consisting of those bitters. Chamomile and Angelica, you know, to me, Angelica is a little bit, it's the, it's the most warming of these warming plants. So that's why I bumped that up a little bit. Um, and then Chamomile is the most relaxant of these remedies. So I want a little bit more of that relaxant property in there. So we've got 30% of that Angelica Chamomile, supporting it with the fennel and orange peel and the licorice root, tying it all together. And the Last thing I want to mention about this formula is that it tastes really good. Um, so that's always a bonus. <laughs> um, and, you know, while I don't necessarily think that our herbal medicine should always taste like candy, you know, um, I think it's, I don't think all of our formulas have to taste good, right? Because let's face it, most herbs don't taste amazing. Um, unless you're an herbalist and you really are interested in herbs and you like obviously generally like the taste of things a little more than most people but most people that you're working with they don't you know it's nice if it can be uh, a little easier on the tongue so to speak so that's the nice thing about this formula too is that it's very very uh, it tastes pretty good you know fennel angelica orange peel licorice I mean that puts in a pretty good flavor last point as well Typically, I administer a formula like this as a tincture, usually, um, you know, starting dosage 15 to 30 drops um, before meals up to three, four times a day for just overall general digestive support. Certainly, it can be used, and that's kind of more of a preventative, right? I mean, it's more ideal to take an herbal formula to optimize your digestive health and get your digestion working really well um, so that you don't get digestive symptoms rather than waiting for the gas or the bloating or the whatever to come along and then take the herbs to try to correct that expression. So I usually suggest people take a formula like this 15 minutes before meals, um, either direct, preferably directly on the tongue, um, but people can also take it in a little bit of water as well. But you know, to me, a big important thing here is for these bitters to work optimally, we should taste that bitter taste in the mouth, which means not diluting it in orange juice or whatever, but actually just squirting it in the mouth 
and that's gonna make this formula work the best. So that is our universal digestive formula. Hopefully you learned something good about that. Drop me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear about what are your favorite digestive herbs, right? Do you have a favorite digestive formula that you've worked with? Love to hear about it. Drop it in the comment section below. And if you're watching this anywhere other than our blog, be sure to head on over to Evolutionary Herbalism dot com slash blog where we've got a whole bunch of free videos and content there for you um, be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel podcast the plant path facebook instagram so you get all of our updates here at the school of evolutionary herbalism so thanks so much for tuning in to this video here and uh, hopefully you can take what you learned here and get out there in the world and help out some digestive systems with what you learned here so thanks so much until next time Take care and be well.